It's the end of February. The Humber College Hawks are headed to Ottawa for the Ontario Provincial Championships. The best eight teams in the province will be there. The top two will move on to compete for the national championship. But Humber won't be content with just moving on. Last year, they beat arch rival Sheridan to win the provincial championship. The two teams are expected to meet again this year. The Hawks have no intention of handing over the championship trophy. Humber has had a tremendous season, finishing first in their league and amassing an overall record of 28 wins and five losses. But as far as the coach and the players are concerned, the team's success depends on how they do from here on in. The real season begins tomorrow. Humber's first game is against Seneca College. On paper, it figures to be an easy matchup. The Hawks played Seneca three times this year and won each game by big margins. Whatever happened last three games mean, really means nothing now. Neutral court, different refs, you got to take it to them early. Loose balls, challenge shots, rebounds, foul shooting, playoff basketball, okay? Let's go. Humber and Seneca trade baskets at the start of the game. Then Humber picks up their defense. With eight minutes to go in the first half, the Hawks open up a 12-point lead. Ah, four up! Four, let's go! And threaten to blow the game wide open. But this isn't the same Seneca team Humber manhandled all season. Come on! Come on! They take control of the game, erase the 12-point deficit, and surge into the lead. At the half, Humber trails by one. First of all, it's a 40-minute game. Don't freak. It's a one-point game. But this is really a test of character. All right? The game is not over. It's a half. Do they have it for two halves? I don't think so. But Seneca refuses to fold. They continue to make shots from everywhere. Let's go! Get a stop! Get up on him! With less than five minutes to go in the game, Seneca takes a six-point lead. And the Hawks don't look like a championship team. If they don't step it up, they'll be on the bus home right after the game. Hey, time out, time out, time out! With five minutes left in the opening game of the Ontario Provincial Championship, Humber trails by six. The Hawks are on the ropes. Now you establish yourself right here. Establish your will. You are playing like it's over. And look at that score. Let's go. Humber go charges on, go. out of the timeout and That's quickly it. wipes out Seneca's lead. Wait, JB! Wait, JB! Junior Brown's bank shot gives Humber a three-point lead with less than a minute to go. But Seneca hits a big three-point shot to tie the game and send it into overtime. Are you ready to step up with in terms of your intensity and your conditioning? And, and, and you're not going to take quick shots. We bought five minutes now. Come on, Dex! Slide! Seneca is having the game of their lives. 
a Seneca win would be an incredible upset. With less than a minute to go, Seneca steals the ball and goes into the lead. 23! 23, 23, let's go! 15 seconds left. Dexter Miller makes an impossible shot, put Humber back in front. One stop! All Humber has to do is stop Seneca once to walk away with the win. But Seneca breaks down their defense and comes up with the tying basket. The teams are headed to a second overtime. Ever seen a game like this? They just don't go away, though, eh? Both teams step up their defense. With two minutes left and Humber up one, Coach Cates calls on Fitzroy Woolery. Fitz hits a huge shot to give Humber a four-point lead. Seneca finally runs out of miracles. This is just the start of what this is like. This, had, this was a quality game. So you should feel very proud of that. You won't play in a game like that where both teams play tremendous basketball. All right, bring it in. The coach is wrong. As good as this one was, the best game of the tournament is yet to come. Hawks, one, two, three. Hawks, we're still alive! Tonight, Humber plays the host team. Algonquin College in the semifinals of the provincial championships. But right now, they're headed to the league's annual banquet, where the regular season All-Stars will be announced, along with the coach of the year. Out of Humber College, Mike Cates. This is the third time he has won the award. Chris Bennett and Junior Brown both make first team All-Star. Jeremy Walters makes the second team, as does Fitzroy Woolery. Making the All-Star team isn't Fitz's only accomplishment this year. Last term, he nearly failed out of school. He would have been off the team if the coach hadn't persuaded the school to give him a second chance. If that happens again, you're done. The thought that he might have to leave Humber was a sobering one. I, I would have been devastated. Like, you know, that's not, that's not where I want my, my, my life to go. You know, I definitely want to have a degree and uh, I definitely want to have a career, you know. And I think, you know, graduating from, from, from here will give me that opportunity. Fitz vowed not to repeat his mistakes. First term, I didn't organize my time very well. You know, I didn't, I put more energy into basketball than I did into, into, into my studies. And this term, you know, I kind of just reorganized my priorities. Fitz passed his midterm exams with flying colors with an average of 75. <laughs> he knows he has to keep it up for the rest of the term so that he can come back to Humber next year. You know, I, I got off to a great start and I just gotta, you know, maintain that, that, that standard that I've set for myself. Humber defeats Algonquin College 79-71 in the semifinals. The victory propels the Hawks into the finals of the provincial championship and another battle with Sheridan.
tonight, Humber and Sheridan are squaring off for the Ontario Provincial Championship. Both teams are guaranteed a spot in next week's Nationals. But nobody is thinking that far ahead. It's the fourth year in a row the two rivals have met in the Provincial Finals. After losing twice, Humber finally won the title last year. They're determined to defend their championship and bring the trophy back home. This is about right now. Your season is right now. This is a statement game, boys. This puts us number one seed and fear in the hearts of the country. This team is thought to be the hottest team in the tournament in the country right now. They're good, but we're better. One, two, three, pass! Humber and Sheridan go after each other right from the start, showing the fans why they're two of the top teams in the country. Neither team is able to take control of the game. At the half, the game is tied at 34. All right. You got to even continue to step up and make the commitment. And I think that's what we're calling on now, your energy. You can't sag now. You've got to be able to say, I'm going to play through pain and fatigue and everything. If you want this, it's yours. Crunch time in a championship game. That's when a coach turns to his veterans. Junior Brown has a reputation of coming through in big games like this one. Junior was a star in high school. He came to Humber after a knee injury ended his U.S. college career. At the start of the season, the coach didn't know if Junior was committed to playing basketball. I mean, you gotta wanna do it. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that it's still worth your while. Junior responded by leading the team in scoring and earning a spot on the all-star team. This is Junior's last year of organized basketball. What are you going to miss most about it? Just being competitive, like, just when just that rush, just being out on the court, hearing people cheer, just scoring, just dropping off a nice pass and just feeling nice, just being on the court, just expressing yourself. For Junior, this season marks not only the end of his career, but the end of a way of life that revolves around friends and basketball. From age about 10, 11, we started going to community center and played basketball every day and just worked on our skills, like a whole group of us. We just grew up together playing basketball. Junior's older brother, Bobby, was his first coach. He was talented from a young age, and he kept getting better and better and better, so as soon as he did that, then people started noticing more and more, and he was touted as one of the best players in the city, so at 16 years old, so that was a good start. In the world Junior grew up in, Basketball is more than just a game. It's part of the culture. You have a game win tonight? Win. Against who? Huh? Perception from the outside is basketball is just basketball. From the inside, basketball is everything to you. Everything to the community, everything to everyone who wants to become somebody. Basketball was life. Yeah, it was life. <laughs> the rest was just details. Junior and his friends all dreamed of playing college ball in the States. Junior was the one who got the scholarship, but in a way, it belonged to all of them. It was a, a, a big thing, a good thing, because everybody wanted it for him. Do you remember the day he left? Oh, goodness. <laughs> we had a party. We had a big barbecue on the backyard. All the family came and friends from the neighborhood and everything. And when he's not here, the guys would come by. Miss Brown, have you heard anything? They'll even give me money, send this for him. 
So it's like the neighborhood child, you know, who's gone out to do something good. Junior went to a college in Kansas. He was in the starting lineup and playing well when he injured his knee and had to come back home. I was just mad. I was just mad. And it just, I guess it just slipped away right in front of me. But he had more than his own disappointment to deal with. Junior was living out the collective dream of all the friends he grew up playing ball with. And now, with his career coming to a close, he realizes that dream will never come true. I just go out just knowing that I tried my hardest, really. And I don't know, I just feel that it's time that, you know, I put it aside and, you know, just go on with my life. If there's anything I'm gonna really miss, it's like just, just playing with my friends most of the time. It's just, I just really want to do it for them, really. And I wish we were all together to say that we're walking away from the game or somebody got something out of it more than, you know what I mean? Than all those baselines we were running back in the days together. Somebody really got something that they could, we could all look back on and say at least one of us made it. Second half of the Provincial Championship. The game's a classic Humber-Sheridan matchup. It's going right down to the wire. With 40 seconds left, Junior gives Humber a four-point lead. Sheridan scores to narrow the gap to two. Humber misses at the other end. Sheridan calls a timeout with nine seconds left. calls for discipline, will, and character. They're going to come hard, and you're going to make a stand right here. Once again, it all comes down to whether Humber's defense can come up with a stop. The Hawks know they blew a chance to put the game away. Guys, come on! Come on, you got to believe! Stop acting like we're down. You are right. We're quiet. Why are we so quiet? Right. Because we can't seem to get over the fact that it's not over. We're not beat. Oh, gosh. I'm sounding down. OK, you get me up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hawks on three. We need One, defense. two, we need three. Hawks. We need the rebound. Your will, guys. It's will. They don't want to lose, and we don't want to win. Take it down! Pace it! With two Come minutes on. left in overtime, the championship game is dead even. Every time Humber scores, Sheridan comes back with a hoop of their own. 30 seconds left, and the score is tied. Humber holds the ball for the final shot. The Hawks come up with the rebound, but they can't get the ball to go in. Some players are never in a double overtime game for their entire career. The Hawks will have to win their second in three days if they're going to return home as provincial champions. The Ontario Provincial Championship game between Humber and Sheridan has gone into double overtime. 
Sheridan gets off to a quick start. They take a five-point lead with a couple of minutes to go. Time out, time out. Forcing Clear. Humbert to call a timeout. The Herbert Hawks need to regroup four. in a hurry. We need to stop, guys. We need something. We really do. And I think we, we got to push something. the ball. I think we have to push the ball we and just something. risk a little bit more now. As he has all season, Jeremy Walters comes through in the clutch. His driving layup brings the Hawks to within one. With 30 seconds left, Humber brings it up court, looking for the basket that will give them the lead. They pass the ball around, looking for an opening. Dexter Miller launches a three-point shot, putting Humber up by one. And three seconds away from a provincial championship. All right, Jam the inbound. All right, Jam you don't inbound. foul, you don't go for steals. You challenge the shot. There's only three seconds. One, two, three, three. Lock with me, lock with me, lock with me. Find him, get your man! Sheridan will only have time for a desperation shot. Dexter, no catch, no flash! No catch, Dex! Trophy will be going back home with Sheridan. Humber won't have to wait long for a chance to get even. Next week, both teams will be at the national championships, and everything will be on the line. middle of March. The Humber College Hawks are hosting the Canadian College Basketball Championships. Eight teams have gathered from across the country. In three days, one will be crowned national champion. The Hawks have had a great year. They finished first in their league and won 31 of their 37 games, the best record of any Humber team ever. All those victories have merely set the stage for the goal the team has had all season, winning the national championship. No matter how many games we won, how many tournaments we won, all that matters about the national championship, trying to be crown number one. Well, if that's their goal, that, that if we don't win a national championship, then their whole season has therefore been uh, you know, not fulfilled. I mean, that's a very difficult way to go through life. Uh, the all or nothing scenario where if you don't achieve your biggest goal, you are a failure. What's your goal? To win a national championship. 
and the season wouldn't be a success otherwise. Coach Cates has won four national titles at Humber, but the last came six years ago, before any of the current crop of players were on the team. I think the feeling for a player winning it and a coach is different. They're the ones that go through the constant practicing. They're the, their bodies are sore. They got to deal with coaches' decision around playing time and criticism and all that stuff. So they're the ones that either win it or lose it ultimately, you know, not coaches. Coaches prepare, coaches make decisions, but they're not playing. For half-brothers Chris Bennett and Marcel Lawrence, a national championship will have added meaning. This is the last year of organized basketball for both of them. It's also the first time the two have ever played together. Chris played at Sheridan College the last three years. This year, he transferred to Humber to play with his brother. We're not going to be satisfied of playing together and losing. We want to be satisfied with playing together and winning. We both know that this is our last chance for that national championship, so we're, championship, so we're taking this very seriously. For them to uh, compete and play as well as they did you know, sets a tremendous tone for the rest of the players. I think that's part of what creates champions. What will winning mean to you personally? I want to be immortalized in the school as well. You know, I want my name on a banner beside uh, the previous four years. I, I want to be remembered. That's what I want to be. I want to be remembered in this school. So when I leave, when I die, whatever, however age, my name is still up on a banner and they remember me. They know who I am and what I did. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Basketball Championships. My name is Herbie Coon and I would like to welcome you all to tonight's marquee matchup. Your Humber Hawks! It has taken the Hawks six long months, 37 hard fought games, and more than 100 grueling practices to get here. Tonight, the Hawks begin the final stage of their quest to win the national championship. The Hawks opened the tournament against the Quebec Provincial Champions, Champlain College from Lennoxville. Humber shuts down Champlain right from the start. Humber's stifling defense leads to easy baskets. Everything is going Humber's way. The Hawks cruise to an easy victory, winning 70 to 49. But the competition is about to get tougher. Tomorrow, the Hawks play the number one ranked team in the country. One down, two, two goals. A win will put them in the championship game. Hawks, one, two, three, Hawks. It's the semifinals of the national championships. The Hawks are only one game away from the championship final. But to get there, Humber will have to beat the University College of the Caribou from Kamloops, British Columbia, the number one ranked team in the country. looks nervous to start the game. AB, play D, let's go! Caribou pounds the ball inside and takes an early seven-point lead. Seven minutes left in the first half, Caribou has muscled its way into a 13-point lead. 
Coach Cates turns to rookie Quentin McLeod in an effort to stem the tide. It's a lot of pressure for a 21-year-old rookie who hasn't seen a lot of court time this year. But Quentin is used to dealing with pressure on and off the court. He and his girlfriend Stacy have been living on their own all year. They had been living with Quentin's mother, but Quentin and his mother weren't getting along, and he and Stacy moved out in September. Quentin is completing his chef training this year. Stacy is finishing high school. Both work part time to support themselves. They've relied on each other to get through. I'm grateful that he's there for me because if he wasn't there for me, I don't know where I would be right now. The one way I've been able to do all this stuff is just uh, for us to be sticking together. I give her support, she gives me support, and basically it's, it's the two of us that make, make this happen. I couldn't do this by myself. Right now, Quentin is on a job placement that hopefully will lead to full-time work. There's been good news for Quentin on another front. He recently spoke to his mother for the first time since he moved out. I've spoken to my mom um, past couple of days, and um, I actually went up and I, I went to her and I saw her, I spoke to her, and. Uh, we said there was some kind of argue, um, disagreements on how, how I left the, the place and stuff like that, but um, I think we're getting our relationship back together. After a tough year, Quentin feels his life is coming together. I'm happy where I am right now. I feel at ease. I mean, every time I come home, uh, I just have a smile, and uh, I, I love being here. With seven minutes left in the first half, the Hawks are in danger of being blown out. It doesn't take long for Quentin to make his presence felt. He uses his speed to break down Caribou's defense, triggering a comeback that puts Humber back in the game. Dexter Miller's three-pointer caps the comeback and gives Humber its first lead of the game. Dexter's ability to make the big shot is why he was an all-star and the team's MVP last year. But this season, he was derailed by a rash of injuries and struggled to find his game. Well, he, he wasn't scoring. Here was a guy averaging 16, 18 points a game, and he was down to six, eight, four some games. Dexter thought about leaving the team, but quitting wouldn't have felt right. I said, I'm going to stick with it, even just for the team, just be there for, you know, all the players as well. Even if I can't be productive on the court, at least I could be there to even say something to them, to encourage them, you know? Dexter kept his place in the starting lineup, but his playing time was reduced in favor of Fitzroy Woolery. If it was hard to swallow, he didn't let Fitzroy know. Dexter has been a, a real good support to me. You know, even though, even though, you know, most of the times when I sub in, I sub in for him. I've had a few bad games, and he's just been like uplifting towards me. He's like, don't worry about it, you know, keep your heads up. Just be positive, you know, everything will fall back into place. Just play hard. And, you know, that's been really, really positive for me. Dexter kept working on his game. By the end of the season, all that hard work began to pay off. He started to play well at the end of February. His confidence got, uh, got going and uh, he started to make shots. And I give him credit for, for putting in the extra work. He was smart enough to know that this wasn't just going to happen. and He had to make it happen with no guarantees. I feel like I'm a warrior. Like I'm going into battle. You have triumph. You know, you overcome all obstacles that at that time might, be, might seem insurmountable. And I mean, just the joy that, you know, when you overcome and you win is satisfying. 
And don't forget you love cookies. <laughs> Don't forget that. She just wants to get that on camera. <laughs> that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. At the start of the second half, Dexter hits three straight jump shots to give Humber a five point lead. But Caribou rallies and ties the game with 10 minutes left. Quentin finds Dexter, who puts Humber back into the lead. Quentin, the rookie, is playing like a fourth-year veteran. His driving layup gives Humber the lead for good. Final score, Humber 78, Caribou 7. Quentin is selected player of the game. The Hawks are headed to tomorrow's championship game where they'll face their perennial rival, Sheridan College, from nearby Oakville, Ontario. One more, baby. Sheridan is the hottest team in the country. They haven't lost in more than a month. Their streak includes two wins over Humber. They're on some kind of weird destiny. We have to stop that, all right? And they are not winning tomorrow night. And you are going to make that happen. Tonight, Humber plays Sheridan College for the national championship. The team season couldn't be coming to a more dramatic conclusion. A matchup against their greatest rival, with the ultimate prize on the line. You, know, you guys have gotten to a great spot to be in, in, in our city playing Sheridan, a, the worthiest of rivals. And I think tonight, I think you think about some people who have been major influences in your life. Is it a friend, a coach, a sister, a brother, a parent, somebody who believed in you when other people said you weren't good enough or you weren't going to make it or you weren't going to get to that next level? And, and I think that's who you play for tonight. You think about that person because it's going to get tough out there. And this is going to be about Will and somebody who really cares about you and maybe somebody that you owe something to is really putting their dreams on top of you. That's who you're playing for. And you're playing for each other, and we're gonna handle whatever happens. One, two, three, Hawks! The game starts out at a furious pace. Sheridan hurts Humber on the inside. The Hawks answer with some deadly outside shooting. At the half, the score is tied. It's all coming down to the second half. The national championship will be decided in the next 20 minutes. This is the last game for this year's team. Some of the players will be back. Others are graduating and moving on. But win or lose, the six month season will leave them all with memories that will last a lifetime. As much as that winning a championship is a great thing, it's not really what it's about. But I think in the end, you remember the people. Merry Christmas, coach. <laughs> That's what players really remember. <laughs> That's what they're going to miss. The experience is really about what they shared together. You know, their roommates on the road, their times that they had, their laughing in the dressing room, the ups and downs and playing time and the struggle and the laughter and the pain and that's what it's all about. 
they will talk about that forever. It's hard to forget about, you know, people like that. You know, those guys had, you know, made some great lasting impressions on me, and I believe I made some on them, so I'll never forget those guys. step up their defense at the start of the second half. There are no easy baskets. The game seesaws back and forth. The pressure is mounting. Midway through the second half, Rupert Thomas's dunk gives Humber the momentum. And it's first lead of the game. With a little over three minutes to go, Humber is up by three. Dexter Miller comes up with a big steal that leads to a basket and a five-point Humber lead. If the Hawks can hold on for the next three minutes, they'll be national champions. The season is all coming down to the last few minutes of the championship game. Humber and Sheridan have been going after each other all night long. Humber has a five point lead. The Hawks get the ball to Junior Brown. Shoot that, Jay! Shoot that, Junior! Shoot that! And then... Junior's baseline drive extends the lead to seven with two minutes to go. Come on! But all year long, Sheridan has been at its most dangerous when its back is against the wall. With a minute to go, they've trimmed Humber's lead to two. With 30 seconds left, Junior takes it to the basket to give Humber a four-point lead. But Sheridan isn't done yet. The putback brings them to within two with seven seconds left. Sheridan fouls to stop the clock, sending Junior to the line for two foul shots. He has to sink both to put the game out of reach and give Humber the national championship. Now we got it. Ten minutes from the first one. 